What I want to tell you about is the Ecofisk Protective Barrier. Now, it doesn't sound like a very sexy project name, and it isn't a very sexy project name, because it's in the oil and gas fields out in the North Sea, and it's probably the least sellable part of engineering that you can think of. People think, oh, you know, it's sort of the dirty side of it, and oil and gas, that's quite boring. I'm actually a bridge engineer and people think, oh, that's quite cool. And it is quite cool. However, doing offshore oil and gas projects is also very cool because people have to come up with very, very clever solutions. And if they don't come up with clever solutions, it is ridiculously expensive to get yourself out of a problem. On the Ecofisk uh, field, which is in the Norwegian North Sea, um, they had a problem back in the 80s which was caused by oil extraction from the underlying chalk. And you're talking like 3,000 metres below the seabed. You're pulling oil out and it's causing subsidence, which is the settlement of the seabed. And you've got all this expensive equipment lying on the seabed. The Ecofisk oil storage tank, which was the piece of, of infrastructure that came under threat, that was linked into the Teesside refinery. So you're talking about 220 miles of pipeline taking oil all the way in from a tank. And this tank typically holds like a million barrels of oil, so it's a big thing. But it's sitting on the seabed and the seabed has moved downwards because of the sub subsidence. And what, once it moves down a certain amount, it was six meters it had moved down, you then got to think about, hang on, that's not right. Should we jack it back up or something very expensive? But actually, no, the, the neat solution to the problem was to surround the oil tank with a protective barrier, and, which was precast on land, and then it was floated in in segments into position and was the best solution. The guy that came up with it was Dr. Peter Broughton. And he thought of the idea, he designed it, he saw the project through from beginning to end, and he is the reason why people should be engineers, because that is a very, I would say, difficult thing to do, but rewarding thing to do. So, I mean, quite amazingly for me, I would say I was a bog standard engineer, really, in a lot of respects, but today, I have met the man, Dr. Peter Broughton, who did this work back in the 80s, and he's come and we have met for the first time. And what an amazing thing to happen. The effects of subsidence was that the structures were becoming progressively more submerged, with the DEXA modules becoming closer to the water surface, and therefore subjected to major wave impact. So we had to do something. And the problem was the closer these platforms, these deck structures, got to sea surface, it was not an acceptable position to be in. It was just, we could not operate. So I was involved in many engineers looking at conceptual studies, model testing, high deck model testing, high deck model testing of the tank, high deck model testing of the protective barrier, and all these things to be able to start the base of the design to, shall we say, recover from the substance. And the early decisions made to all these steel jacket structures was to cut through the legs and jack them up six metres and put in six metre long foot pieces. That was not possible on this structure because the Ekimis tank, the thing on the inside there, is 90 metres diameter, 110 supports on neoprene bearings. So we came up, I came up actually, with the normal solution of a standalone protective barrier. Civil engineering, in my view, is one of the most creative, like other disciplines of engineering, it's one of the most creative things you can do. It's not the arts, it's not the theatre. This is the stuff which was not there before. Somebody has to do it. Young people, if you're thinking about in civil engineering, all I can say is, I believe there's a terrific opportunity. We will continue doing infrastructure projects and all these things for the benefit of everybody. Occasionally, a project like this comes up, which is a tremendous project to, to get involved in from the beginning. So, you know, we should be all aspiring to do that sort of engineering. And as a bridge engineer, I've come up with a few similar um, neat ideas, nothing as big as that, obviously, but that is the thing that makes you think, I'm so glad I became an engineer and not a banker or a 
geologists. Nothing against those jobs, it's all fine. However, being a civil engineer is something very special.